The Mercury Star Runner is uh, primarily a data collector, but it also has capacity for storage. So depending on the day, if you want to go collect some data or you want to go collect some storage or cargo, it's entirely up to yourself really, but the primary goal is to collect data. But before you can transport it, you've got to capture it, be, be that from being given the stored data or using the scanners to listen in on data and convert it, encrypt it, store it, uh, and then do the, the running aspect of it. It's got a dedicated scan bay, so it's got a little room off to the right. When you go into the main area of the ship, it's got say, a dedicated area where you can go and scan and collect them. It's also got four dedicated avionics for scanning. And then it also has a, a very large bank of computers and data pods to store that in. It's much larger than the Herald, uh, so it can hold a lot more. The downside is it's a much larger ship than the Herald, so you could be doing multiple trips in a Herald versus spending a lot of time gathering a huge amount of data in this and then transporting it. The development process for this ship, we wanted an asymmetrical ship. We looked at a very cool asymmetrical ship, which was the Millennium Falcon. And luckily enough, we've got a toy model of the Millennium Falcon right next to our desk. But Mike had just recently worked on the Starlifter. So we had a look over the Genesis Starliner and tried to implement some of that in what you see now. Taking the Crusader style that was developed for the Starlifter and transposing that onto something that has to look fast, has to be as asymmetrical. With it being Sarah's first ship, there was a lot of iterations in terms of just sketching out ideas because they're quite fast. Sometimes it's hard when you have too many things to look at. So basically, you know, I'll pick five or six and we'll start trying to just hone it down to what I think Chris will like so that we have like a generally like three options for him to look at. When we're looking at ships, we always have to think about thrust placement and asymmetric ships always cause trouble on that side because the best or strongest thruster layout is a very symmetrical sort of cube or elongated shape where all the thrusters are in line with each other. They can all counter each other equally. If you don't have the hull to support that, then you have to compromise it somewhere. When we were building this ship, we, we knew we wanted to have the asymmetric shape. Some of the early versions were very, very different to the final form and they all suffered from that. So we tried various explorations to see how we could keep the asymmetric look, but keep it symmetrical in terms of its thruster placement. With the Starlifter, it was soft curves. There was, there was, you know, it had a double wing. We still, you know, we kept some negative space between that. So we took those things across, but this is more angular, but it works in terms of just sort of, you can't make a cargo ship into a fast data room. Things have to change. The interior, I, I got to make it slightly asymmetrical as well, which was really fun. I see it as like, you know, it's viable level. So in the break area, the hollow chest table that we put in there has a little switch on it. So you can press it, that goes down into the floor and splits open. You can go into the ventilation system. You know, you can be running around in the ventilation system. You don't really quite know where they are. So they can come up behind you and then, you know, you're like, oh no, I've, I've been ambushed. So you can kind of sort of play a game of, you know, almost whack-a-mole. You know, you think someone's over there and then they pop up over here and, it, you know, it could make for quite an interesting sort of combat experience. It just adds that little extra level of gameplay that I really wanted to integrate into it because, you know, it's got purpose and also it, it, it should be really fun, you know, especially if you don't know where they are. <laughs> Weapon-wise, it has two manned turrets in the cargo area, which have a size two. Uh, so if you're getting shot at from the bottom or the top, you're covered. Um, it has full 360 as well, so you know you can get anyone, any pesky people trying to shoot at you and take you down. It also has two front pylons as well, size two. As you can see from the cockpit, it's totally glass, and you can also see the bottom of the cockpit as well, and through the the cockpit glass you can actually see the guns at the bottom and um, so it would be some really cool seeing the the guns firing which is what i really wanted i just wanted this totally like just glass just to make people show them off you know like yeah some guns firing like yeah you know like just like yeah it's, it's fab you know the people i see that want this in the persistent universe they might have say a herald or a freelancer and those are great options for those specific roles whereas this is this allows you to do a bit of both i mean i'd, I'd buy the ship myself um, just for the looks of it i think it's going to make quite a, a big statement when you see one of these things come into a, a truck stop or a, a space station it's sort of everyone's going to turn around and look at it so 
if you're that sort of person, that's, that's probably where it's going to be.